the 80s are in right now. Arguably, maybe a little too in. But while everyone and their grandmother is slapping a shit ton of purple on their game and calling it an 80s aesthetic, Rad is going the full Saturday morning cartoon route. It's got the music, it's got the art direction, it's got the wacky setup, and most importantly, it's got the most bodacious narrator this side of Bastion. You cannot survive the toxic breath of the fallow as you are. And so, by the power of the menders, you must be remade. Honestly, Bastion isn't a bad comparison for this game in general. You're in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, mostly composed of torn up islands, you're mostly engaging in some very familiar and pretty basic hack and slash action with a club, and you've got two narrators chatting along with your every move, alternating between filling in lore and talking up your exploits. But of course, this is also a roguelite where your abilities stem from growing snake heads, boomerang arms, and egg spawning tails, and there's a much bigger emphasis on gameplay over any form of continuous narrative. All of that makes Rad a very different beast. So let's see how its version of the apocalypse pans out. As always, I'm Alex, and this is First Five, where I ask if games are worth your time, not your money. I played a game for five hours, and I'm gonna tell you if those were five hours well spent. And today, we're getting a new look in Rad. <laughs> Before we get too deep into the review, I did receive a free advance review copy for this game, so a big thank you to Double Fine and a heads up for everybody else. Rad's got a pretty straightforward setup. The world's gone through not one, but two apocalypses to make it extra uninhabitable, and your tiny colony that's trying to make it in the rubble has run into a problem. The lights are starting to turn off. So off you go across the wasteland on an epic 80s cartoon adventure to try and find a new power source to bring back to camp. And after getting zapped by some special cosmic magic to let you get across the wasteland, your limbs start mutating into some truly weird stuff. Maybe your arm will become a detachable boomerang that grows back every time you rip it off. Or your skull will suddenly light on fire and become a throwable grenade. Or your arm just becomes an actual living being of its own that beats the shit out of anything in sight. Rad gets some serious points for creativity and grim humor with the aesthetic of its mutations. And in general, aesthetic is this game's strong point. The way the wasteland turns green and plentiful in your wake is a cool touch. The music's pretty entertaining, and just that narrator. Dinero. But outside of Rad's aesthetics, the gameplay itself is... It's just kind of okay. At its core, it's just a set of very basic hack and slash mechanics. You've got a melee attack button, a pretty piddly jump, a dodge roll, and a slam attack. It isn't until you start getting the mutations themselves that the gameplay starts grooving. Once you get a solid supply of mutations, though, the game does fall into a pretty good rhythm, where you've always got something to do, and one ability always flows cleanly into the next. But you gotta do a lot to get there. For one, cooldowns on the mutations are long enough that you can't just rely on one. They feel a little more like grenades than your main rifle, if that makes sense. And to its credit, this does require you to use every ability available to you instead of just repeatedly pressing one button to win. But it also means you're looking at a good 30 minutes of grinding up front every single run before you get your second mutation and the game starts to click. In the meantime, you're pretty much playing a kind of clunky, mostly bog-standard one-button hack-and-slash. Compounding this, you're also kind of fragile in this game. You do slowly build a health pool as you progress through each level, but frequently I found myself in a situation where I'd spend an hour leveling up and slowly getting those mutations that make the game click. And then I have one bad fight, take three hits, and I'm knocking on death's door. This has obviously become a little less of an issue as I've gotten better at the game, but these two design decisions still created a situation where Rad kept coming to a screeching halt every time it was just getting good. But none of that is my main beef with Rad. The real problem I kept running into time and time again is that you basically have zero choice about which mutations you get. Part of the point of roguelikes is that you're forced to work with whatever random options you get, but in most cases, the fun comes from making meaningful choices out of that randomness. Winning a fight in Slay the Spire gives you a pick of three random cards to choose from. Into the Breach gives you a whole host of random rewards you can buy every time you finish an island. You have to deal with randomness, but you can still consciously build towards something. Rad doesn't have that. 
There are stores that you can purchase items at, but most of your options are just one-off consumables like potions, and the few mutations you can purchase are mostly passives like immunity to fire or acid. Bonuses that are technically helpful, but also both generic and kind of uninteresting. Meanwhile, the big ticket items, the mutations that actually give you active abilities and alter how you play, are primarily doled out every time you level up. Max out your rad meter, and the game gives you one mutation at random. So you have next to no input in how you develop your character, meaning you regularly have to work with mutations you're not interested in. Or you get the same mutation a million runs in a row. I swear to god, I've gotten this flaming skull bomb in almost every single one of my runs. I even had one run where I swapped it out for a new random mutation, the only time I got to do that in all five hours I played, and then I just got the skull again the second time I leveled. Being Ghost Rider and getting to chuck my own head at stuff was cool the first three times, but I'm ready to try something else and have zero say in whether I get to or not. But it's not all doom and gloom. Red has a bunch of small, thoughtful touches baked into its design as well. Take, for instance, the trails of grass you leave everywhere. At first glance, they're just a nice visual touch, but if you walk over them, you get a speed boost, which saves a ton of time on backtracking and exploration. And then I learned to coat boss rooms in grass to give yourself a movement boost in a fight. Except some bosses can also then light the grass on fire, and the more thoroughly you've coated the arena in grass, the more dangerous these abilities get. And a whole bunch of interesting tactical decisions started springing out of this one design decision. Rad also does a good job evoking a sense of discovery, where you'll just accidentally stumble into an entirely new mechanical system, and it feels like the game's opening up in ways that few games do. Like this one time I happened to pick up an item that let me see secrets and discovered that the game has treasure hidden behind breakable walls and under the floorboards. That was a cool moment of organic discovery. But it's time to ask the big question. What do you get out of five hours with Rad? While I've probably never come close to seeing the end of the game, I've gotten a little over a half dozen failed runs in across my five hours of playtime. And as I always bring up when I cover a roguelike, this isn't necessarily a game where seeing the credits is an end goal. It's a lot more about the journey along the way. That said, as I mentioned, this game has a habit of letting you cruise along for an hour until you run into one bad fight and suddenly it's game over. And that feels like it treats my time a little cheaply. I'm not a huge fan of that. Overall, Rad is mostly just decent. It unquestionably has its moments. And if you luck into mutations that you happen to like, and if you survive long enough to pile them on, the game can be a lot of fun. But when it doesn't come together, it can kind of feel like a wasted run, which means wasted time. And I know that sounds like a ridiculous complaint that can be leveled at any roguelike, but there are a half dozen just off the top of my head that aren't like that that are just inherently fun to play right out of the gate and give you enough choices to make even disastrous runs interesting. And if I'm being honest, I'd reach for any of those games before Rad. If it still sounds interesting to you or the aesthetic really has you hooked, you'll probably have some fun with it. But don't expect it to blow your mind. And conveniently enough, I've already talked about some of those roguelikes that I would sooner reach for. There's Nowhere Prophet, the recent Wasteland Traversing Deck Builder, and Wizard of Legend, which I covered way back in a quarterly wrap-up a year ago. But I hope you enjoyed this first five review. If you did, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. If you're looking for games that value your time and don't pad themselves, I'm your guy. Thanks for watching this far, and I'll see you all next week.